What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Burton and today we are on part 12 of my series on SQL and data analytics for beginners. So guys, before we jump into anything, I really want to recap on how much we've accomplished so far within the data analytics side of our tutorial. In Tableau, we have been able to create our very own story with three charts on it. In each of those charts, we've been able to visualize valuable information. Along with that, in our quantity chart, we've been able to utilize trend lines and forecasts to give a future outlook from the previous data that we have. And along with that, we've been able to detail and color our charts to our liking, to visualize our information in the way that we like. Well, speaking on the topic of visualizing the information in the way that we'd like, Tableau offers a variety, a wide variety of charts that we can use to display our information. So far, we've only used lined and area charts, and we're going to be covering the area chart in a cooler way. However, we'll cover over some of the basic chart types that you should know that we haven't covered so far uh, that are really essential to be a beginner and utilizing Tableau and data analytics. So let's go ahead and cover some of those with a few case scenarios. So go ahead and create a new sheet. And the first one we're going to be covering is the areas chart continuous. So what is our scenario in this case? So let's say, for example, we want to generate a chart that shows quantity sold over time by category. So previously we've done this with quantity sold over time. However, we want to show by each category. And in this case, we're going to be creating a chart that's known as a uh, stack dimension or multiple dimension chart. And this is where an area chart can really come in handy where we have multiple dimensions to measure. So let's go ahead and just show you what that looks like. So first off, we got to add our first dimension, which is order date. So we'll just go ahead and double click it. And then instead of having it at just a year, uh, we're going to bring that down to a week number. All right, so we've got it nice and spread out. And then after that, we're going to go to quantity as our measure. Now, it's going to be default as a line chart. However, we're going to just go ahead. We can see that it's an available option, and we'll click on the area chart. Now, like I stated, we've already done this before in the sense of producing a quantity chart. And you know we don't know what categories are selling each week and how many. So let's go ahead and put in our second dimension. It's as simple as clicking on it, guys. We'll go ahead and click on category. Now we have our three categories visualized within those quantities sold. And we can see how much we're selling each week. And we can spot trends within that information. Uh, let's say, for example, one is expanding. We can obviously see that's our strong suit. And we can find ways to even boost how we're expanding it. Or we could find industries or categories within our quantity sold where we're seeing maybe a downtrend in it. Maybe we're doing something wrong and we can go back and build supplemental uh, solutions to fix it. So this is the starting point of building the valuable insights that we can get from our previous sales information. All right, so that's perfect, guys. Let's go on to creating a, another chart. And the next one I want to cover, I want to cover something that I really enjoy using. And this is what's called the filled map chart. Now, this is where you're going to be using geolocation to really visualize sales information. And the, uh, the SuperSore uh, sample database, we have a lot of valuable information, and a lot of it is location-based. So how can we visualize that to build valuable insights? Well, let's go ahead and add what is required. We need our first geolocation. So we'll do country. And then we'll go ahead and we're going to add state. Now, it's going to bring us to a, sim, uh, a symbols map, which is going to pretty much, uh, when we add the measure of sales, it's going to vary the circle on that map uh, by how many sales. However, we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to go ahead and use field map. And as, re as for now, it's pretty much a blank standard blue color. But we're going to add our measure for sales. And as we can see, there's a variation. We can see that in states like California, Washington, Texas, New York, and a lot of other coastal states, we see a darker color signifying higher sales for uh, those states comparative to more of the Midwest states that are a little low population and less sales overall. So this is a great way to visualize and really get a valuable insight into what states are your best states for sales. Um, and you can also use this for profit and a lot of other numerical values to uh, really get information out of it. So I really love the film map, guys. I really recommend you use it when you get the opportunity to. So on to the next one. We're going to go ahead and create a tree map. Now, tree maps are really cool as well. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to measure uh, our category. So we'll go ahead and do category. 
and we're gonna do uh, let's go ahead and just do sales okay so now it's gonna print us out a nice little table like this but we're gonna go ahead and select the tree map now we can obviously see that uh, technology is our primary category we can see that furniture is the secondary and office supplies is the third one so tree maps can be really useful as well and also in doing so why don't we go ahead and do a pie chart so we'll go ahead and pretty much do the same thing we'll go ahead and use category we'll do sales and then we'll go to a pie chart now it's going to generate pretty small and not put any labels on it but we're just going to go ahead keep it simple add some marked labels to the sides so we can see how much sales are in each one and there we go so we can see how much sales are printed and we're going to go ahead and increase the size on that just a little bit awesome alrighty so that's how you use a pie chart in its most basic form you can detail and design it how you'd like but we're just keeping it rough and trying to show you all what we can print now I want to emphasize something here seeing as I'm pretty much done covering the main ones you guys are going to use at the beginning notice how on the right side here for example on the horizontal bar chart it says what it requires as a chart it says that it needs zero more dimensions or one or more measures depending on what chart type you want to use you have to have a certain amount of dimensions and measures with inside of it so we can really get an understanding of visualizing that information tableau is not going to register or allow you to use certain chart types unless it has the proper information to do it in the first place if it allowed you to do that it would just come out really weird or it wouldn't be able to function whatsoever so it's important to make sure that you've got the right information ready for tableau to use before you try to select the chart type that you want so anyways guys that's it for the different chart types there's a variety of other ones that we didn't cover however i covered the main ones that you guys are going to be using which are line charts uh, area charts pie charts tree maps uh, the filled map, which I love in Tableau and is one of the standout features of it. But anyways, guys, if you guys want to dive in deeper, the other ones are pretty simple to use. Mess around with them if you get the chance and let me know which ones are your favorite in the comments below. But anyways, guys, I'll see you all in the next video. So stay tuned.